What's going on, guys? Hopefully you're having a good Sunday today. I was uh, kind of going through Twitter and uh, just some of the, the news and interviews that have been popping up over the last weekend or so, and I came across this interview here, and it's pretty interesting for one real reason, and we're going to talk a bit about that, because the thing with the Switch, a lot of people recognize its weaknesses, right? Uh, I don't think that's surprising to anyone to hear that the Switch isn't as powerful as something like the Xbox One even, right? That's not shocking to a lot of people. But one thing that is always overlooked when it comes to the Switch, and uh, probably one of the biggest weaknesses, maybe even one that keeps most third parties away, is the cost of the cartridges. In fact, there are some games that have not been announced or outright put on hold, waiting for those cartridges to get cheaper or just in general more affordable to make it so so everything makes sense to do. Because of course, these companies are here to make money, not just put out a game just to put out a game, make it physical and everything. And a lot of these companies still want to have store representation for their games. So they're still looking for a cartridge on store shelves and not necessarily just digital. However, we have seen something like uh, Final Fantasy, uh, what, Maxima? Uh, that one, World of Final Fantasy Maxima, was only digital on the Switch that I, that I saw, where it was physical on the Xbox. But we heard that 10, 10 2, and we heard that 12 is all going to be physical, although the strange thing, thing about 10, 10, 2 is it's going to be uh, half half and half in the U.S., whereas in uh, other parts of the world, like uh, I think they were saying Southeast Asia and Japan, for example, it will be physical straight up, everything on one cartridge, maybe even two carts. That's also very possible. We'll see. But, but this was an interesting uh, interview here that Nintendo Life did. And it was, uh, it was an interview with uh, Virtuos. Now, Virtuos is porting the Final Fantasy games. So they are doing uh, 10, 10, 2. They're doing 12 Zodiac Age for the Switch. And uh, you might be picking those up already. But what was interesting to me was Final Fantasy 12 is a fairly large game on the PS4. A lot of people may not realize that, but I believe that's like a 50 gigabyte game. And they kind of mentioned that here in this interview a bit as well, because they were asked about how they fit this game on the Switch when it came to file size. Because there are games that have been put on hold that some people would think of, uh, like, think of Doom when that was announced. A lot of people looked at that as being, wow, they're fitting Doom on the Switch in terms of visuals, right? People are like, oh, wow, I can't believe they're making that run on the Switch. There are a lot of games that will run on the Switch that aren't on the Switch right now because of the cartridge sizes. And from what we're hearing now, there are going to be more third-party games this year that are announced that are going to catch some people off guard from what we're hearing. And it seems like cartridge sizes are becoming cheaper. And the biggest reason uh, for that, I assume, is just over time, they've been uh, producing more and more, and they're just, in general, just becoming cheaper to get at a wholesale level or manufacturing level for companies that need to do this. So, in this interview, they do talk about porting the game, of course, right? Uh, they said this project got on our radar in the second half of 2017, so the team was up and running in December. For big franchises like Final Fantasy, it usually takes some time to get release dates aligned with the rest of the SKUs and other projects, so we usually put some flexibility into the schedule. We know this is coming out in April. 10, 10, 2 is coming out mid-April, and then 12 is uh, right at the end of April. So they're not even that far away, technically. Uh, what, about three months for 12, which is the one that we're going to talk about here? And you can see here... I mean, look, look at this right here, uh, on how hard it was to scale the game's release on Switch. Uh, notice what he says, that I would, I would say it was quite technically challenging because to make Final Fantasy work on Switch, we need to convert it to 64 gigabytes. So the Switch version need, needed to be shrunk without impacting the performance, as this requires a fair amount of skill. We have a small team specifically to target these parts of the remaster. So essentially they, they needed to get it on a smaller card. I'm not really sure why it says we need to convert it to 64 gigabytes because later on in this interview, they mention what size cartridge they got it onto. But do you notice how the thing they seem to talk about is the storage size, like of the cartridges? If you remember Arc, which is a, a terrible port, obviously, technically, like from a technical side. Uh, but when they were talking about it at a, like GDC and other places, they said the biggest issue was the cartridge sizes. They said that you'd be surprised at what can run on the Switch, but getting everything to fit on like cartridges rather than just a, you know, 50 gigabyte Blu-ray where you just just burn it to Blu-ray or press it and it's out the door and it's cheaper. 
Uh, this is a situation kind of what Nintendo ran into with the 64 where cartridges were just more expensive and then over time they started to get a bit cheaper and they were able to do something like uh, Resident Evil 2, which would have been an unthinkable port at that time because of the cartridge, not because the 64 was weaker than the PlayStation and was not able to run it. Like I said, Final Fantasy VII would have run fine on the 64, it just wasn't possible because of that cartridge size of it. And of course, Final Fantasy VII was massive, it was three discs, eight was four discs, nine was four discs, it, it just wasn't possible. So, uh, let, me, let me go down here a bit further. And they said, uh, on lessons learned from having to port the games to Switch. For Nintendo Switch, the main challenge was the package size. Again, that's what we just talked about. As the previous raw data size could reach up to 50 gigabytes, this much data simply cannot fit on a single Switch game card, so we had to analyze and modify the data cooking pipeline and manage to fit the game on a 32 gigabyte cart without any impact on visual quality or performance, which tells me at this point, if they were willing to do this, uh, means that the 32 gigabyte card is at least available for a mass production game like this. I say mass production because the last time we saw that I can remember a 32 gigabyte cartridge was for Dragon Quest uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2, I believe. Uh, the one that's kind of like a, a, a beat em up, right? It's kind of like, a, I guess, a Warriors game, Dragon Quest Warriors. Uh, that was the last one that I remember that was larger. That was, uh, that was just under 32 gigabytes in size, and I believe they had a physical copy of that. So this isn't the first time we've seen it, but that wasn't available really anywhere else other than like Japan, for example. So this is going to be a mass produced game that is going to be available everywhere and it's going to be a 32 gigabyte cartridge that it's on. So they didn't do that thing where you have to download part of it, for example, which a lot of places, are, I mean, LA Noir, right? That, that would have been much better off having a 32 gigabyte cart, but I think it's pretty clear it just wasn't available. Whereas now Final Fantasy 12 appears to be fitting on a 32 gigabyte card. It also tells me that the 64 gigabyte card is not necessarily ready and uh, that's that's gonna be probably a little while. That might even be closer to the end of the Switch's lifespan that we see one of those used for some big game or something crazy. But a 32 gigabyte cartridge would really help with a lot of these companies that wanna move their stuff over because I think 32 gigabyte cartridge is like the sweet spot for a lot of these companies. Like Doom, for example, was on a 16 gigabyte cartridge and then you still had to download the multiplayer, right? Um, if it was a 32 gigabyte cartridge, probably everything would have been on there. Same with Wolfenstein. Uh, if, uh, if that was the case, Wolfenstein wouldn't have required a download, which it does. So I'm looking at this and this is, uh, it's, it's exciting to see third parties not have that hurdle anymore, which is a storage size issue on the cartridge. Again, people believe that the Switch's uh, specs or its power is the problem when really it, it actually comes down to the cartridges more than anything else. That's the thing that kind of makes these companies pause for a minute is that cartridge size. We've seen games like Ark look terrible, right? Like they don't, it doesn't look good at all but they still put it on there, right? It seemed like, I bet you if they couldn't get it on a cartridge that was small enough to make that make sense, they wouldn't have done it. It didn't have anything to do with visuals or performance for them. Uh, now it's not to say, say that for every company because some companies just don't want their games to look that bad, but uh, it's, it's interesting that cartridge sizes appear to be less of an issue now than they were when the Switch first came out. And it's it's actually exciting because, like I said, there are some third-party games that people will be uh, surprised to see. Uh, some that are, that have, I think some have even kind of been put out there, but it's looked to be, like, impossible. Uh, you might be surprised at some stuff that, that we think is going to be shown this year, but it's definitely not a, a as much a visual issue so it's, it's it's interesting to see this and of course i'm actually a bit curious to see what the 32 gigabyte cartridge looks like inside so maybe we'll pop 12 open just to see because we've already looked at some of the bigger and smaller ones before in a video and that was pretty interesting to see so maybe when i get 12 we'll kind of pop the plas i was able to get resident evil back together for example without any issues so maybe we'll pop uh 12 apart and see what that 32 gigabyte cartridge looks like and again, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Let me know what you guys think about the 32 gigabyte cartridge now being available for the Switch. Seemingly, it, I guess starting now in 2019 at least, it's become uh, fiscally, or, or I guess just from a money standpoint, it's possible to do it. So they're not losing like their shirts trying to get this game out there. And it also makes me wonder if they would have been able to do Final Fantasy XII without the 32 gigabyte cartridge 
considering I don't think they wanted to have it as a separate download. So I wonder if the 32 gigabyte cartridge was available when 12 first came out, if it would have come out on PS4, Switch, and uh, NPC, or I don't know if Sony had some kind of like timed exclusive with it, because now it's also coming to the Xbox, something that wouldn't have been a problem then either. So interesting stuff nonetheless. Let me know what you guys think about this situation. Make sure you guys like the video if you liked it, uh, dislike it if not, and guys, I'll see you in the next video.